Hey folks, I have spent over $600 with Taxi Music over the last two years. My express goal was to find more libraries for my sync licensing music. And just so you know, if you are just finding this channel, I have been a full-time music producer for about the last 23 years and been producing music and composing music for 40 years. Five years ago, I kind of began a transition back to being a full-time composer, especially focused on music licensing. You can see my latest video about the success I have had with Sync, uh, and including my first payments, which are very exciting, and, and follow my journey as well on all this kind of stuff relating to music licensing. In this video, I am gonna talk about my journey with Taxi. It's not gonna be a rip on Taxi. I think they're a good company, and I'll talk about that later. But I wanna talk about why I have come to this decision to quit the service, and what I plan to do instead. So why am I not uber excited enough to stay with Taxi and hope it will continue to lift my composing career? Come along for the ride. So yeah, taxi. One of the reasons I am certainly quitting in the first place is because of what it costs. But I want to offer some things to you for free to help you get where you want to be. First, I just developed a new free song checklist on how to register, license, distribute, and market every song that you make. This is especially useful if you are cranking out one song at a time doing your best and you just want to make sure that you're doing the most you can with each song. Maybe submitting that song to Taxi will be on the marketing side or the licensing side of the checklist for you. It's not on mine. This is my free gift to you and you can find it at makemusicincome.com slash checklist. I have other things for free like the 50 ways to make music income ebook it's a lot of ideas for you on how that you could make more music income. The Upload to Pond 5 video course, which kind of talks about how to take your music and upload it to Pond 5. If you're interested in getting into some of these non-exclusive stock libraries, Pond 5 is a great place to start. And there's even more free stuff for you. Just go to makemusicincome.com slash free. As you may know, I did a video here midway through my first year with Taxi. I had just started this channel and I was talking about some different things and that was one of the things that was kind of bugging me at the time. I was pretty ambivalent about it. I, I probably wasn't overly positive about it in that video, but I did have nice things to say about it and tried to make it fair. Plus at the time I made that first video, I had already been working with libraries that I had found and was starting to get music into these libraries, into these exclusive sync libraries, which is what I joined Taxi for was to find libraries. And I already had that going and I was actually getting stuff into their catalog and I actually started getting my first placements by the end of that year. I have been getting television placements with the libraries that I am part of for the past year or more now. And so my sync career is underway. When renewal time came around last year, I had done an interview with a taxi member on my channel who had done quite well. So I took a long look at what I had done with taxi in that first year. And I decided I just didn't give it the attention or the seriousness it required to really do well with taxi. Taxi provides these briefs that you can look at to see what companies are looking for and what they're looking for to pitch to these companies. I was not writing specifically for these briefs. And that was a key success point I found for the people who were doing well with Taxi. So in this video, I talked about why I was going to renew a Taxi, the reasons why I was going to give it a better shot in my second year. Around the time of that second video, I was also contacted by the president of Taxi, Michael Laskow, and he asked me to come on his channel and do kind of a questions and answers type thing about why I was either quitting or not quitting Taxi at that time. By the way, I had already renewed by the time we did that interview. And so I was on the Taxi channel and talked back and forth asking uh, Michael some questions and he asked me some questions kind of. After re-upping with Taxi last year in 2021, I do think I have taken it way more seriously. I have written for briefs 
focused pitches and I've had more forwards. And a forward means in taxi language that they have listened to the song. Someone uh, at taxi has listened to the song and deemed it good enough to go to the library that they're trying to pitch songs to, to see if that library will accept it and want to get in touch with the composer. I have spent a total of $600 in two years, including two discounted years at 199. If you, it's usually around the end of the year, Christmas time, or November or December, they offer a $199 price, $100 off their regular $299 price per year. And so I caught that discount the first year, and then when you re-up, they can give you that discount again at $199. I have submitted about 40 pitches over these two years at $5 a pitch. It costs $5 extra, even on top of what you have to spend per year, it's $5 for them to listen to each pitch after that. So that's another $200 that I spent, plus the $400 to be part of the service, which over two years was $600. Not including my time, not including all the mixing and producing of the tracks and other things that might come along with Taxi, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But now at the end of my second year, after looking back at those costs, I just can't consider Taxi as a cost-effective service for me personally. And I'm going to give you my reasons why. So probably the first reason and the biggest reason why I'm not continuing with Taxi is that I can do this myself. I can go out and find libraries myself and have found libraries myself and don't have to have a service that I pay $600 to to do it for me. After $600 and two years, not one forward has been replied to or have I been contacted by a company after those forwards. Not one forward has led to a return call or a contact from a library. In that time, by the way, I have signed with several more libraries that I just contacted for free by doing some simple research and having great songs that I thought those libraries would need. That's just the unfortunate and inconvenient truth about my situation with tax. Now, some people might say, well, maybe your music isn't good enough. Okay. While I was with Taxi, I signed with four exclusive libraries and one non-exclusive library. I am getting stuff pitched. I am getting stuff into television shows. And now I have gotten paid. I also make thousands of dollars a year with my non-exclusive stock libraries, my music on Spotify and DSPs, sheet music and other royalties. So I'm not sure that the music or the production is the problem. All the time and the money I spend on taxi on the yearly rate, the $5 submissions, the briefs that come every day, to their credit, they send out a lot of briefs. But I'm not sure that two emails with listings of tons of briefs that then take my attention to look at my email and look through them and try to write down possibilities every single day, sometimes twice a day, you're getting these briefs, which is good if you want a lot of briefs. The bad news is it can be a little distracting because I get thinking about the briefs. I get thinking about what I could do. I'm, I'm writing down notes and it's taking time away from doing other things. I could be writing and producing new music for the libraries that I already have. I could be writing and producing new music for libraries I want to get into. I could be posting more music to Spotify and marketing more to my DSPs, the music that I have up there. I could be putting more non-exclusive music into libraries for goodness sake. I have literally made thousands and thousands of dollars with stock music libraries rather than spend $600 with Taxi for no relationships with music licensing. This channel is called Make Music Income, not Spend Income for Possible Music Income. So here's the problem with the middleman and Taxi, while they have the best of intentions, I truly believe that, they are still a middleman. There is still a middleman listening to the music and i don't really care how trained the middleman is what the experience of the middleman is it's still a middleman it's still a different pair of ears that is hearing the music than the pair of ears you want to hear the music they could still get the listen wrong heck even the beatles were passed on ed sheeran kanye west these were all passed on by people who had been in the music business for years professionals people who had made millions passed on these bands. Ears can just get it wrong, even if they are getting it wrong for what they feel are the right reasons. Anyone who is either a record label looking for an artist and can 
decide for or against signing that artist is listening or, in this case, a taxi representative listening to your song and deciding if they should pass that on to the next person could quickly pass on something that the person at the library might like. Again, they are doing it with the best of intentions, but they could still pass on something that the client might like. This is the problem with the middleman. This is the problem with the gatekeeper. All that to say, I just think approaching libraries directly and making those personal connections and relationships is what is going to win for you in this business. And I'm not alone at saying this. Most people who do this kind of work, most people who've had success, have it by making those relationships themselves. And so while I totally believe that Taxi is a service that can help you with this, for me, I personally think I would just rather go and approach the libraries myself with the music that I think will work for them and hear from the actual ears that are going to use it versus a middleman's ears. Another issue for me personally with Taxi is the fact that I'm just not that impressed with what I have heard from people who I personally know or people in our Discord who have gotten responses from the forwards. So they have written for a brief. The song was forwarded to the client from Taxi. The client got back in touch with the writer or the artist or whatever. And what I'm hearing, the companies that I'm hearing getting back to these people or the the kinds of clients and the things they are wanting from the writers has been so unimpressive to some of them that they have just said, no, thank you. And they are not things that I would want. Individuals looking for help with some gig or companies and libraries that won't even entertain a live video or even call you back on the phone, I can get results like that for free without all the costs of forwards and all the briefs and everything. If that's indeed the result of forwards, and in all fairness, I do know people who have gotten some pretty good deals with Taxi. But if, if I'm not going to get really good quality contacts from these Taxi forwards, then it's not worth spending the money in the first place and even getting contacted from these companies. So now that brings us back to the briefs and the forwards. The briefs are plentiful, as I said, and mostly they are well described. It's impossible to exactly know what someone has in mind. And someone at Taxi is trying to write a brief that describes what the client is wanting. So there's a kind of a middleman before the middleman who is writing what the client has told them and trying to write that up as a brief and send it to you. But the briefs are good. They do a good job trying to describe what the client wants. They give nice references and tell you exactly, exactly what to do and exactly what they want to hear. My problem personally is I just don't enjoy writing for briefs. This is my problem. And again, it probably comes from the fact that I have been writing for decades for clients specifically. When I started my career, I was writing for corporate and commercial clients, writing jingles and writing music similar to this that would be used for television things. And then my last two decades have been spent working for artists who told me exactly what they wanted their music to sound like and were the final ears and the final decision on if those songs got produced the way they wanted them produced. So I might be in a completely different spot than you. You might be ready to get to work for a company, working with a company like Taxi that says, do this, and you say, yes, sir. And you compose and pitch a song that is exactly what that brief wants. That might be exactly what you want to do. It's not what I want to do. I'm just in a point in my life where it's more important for me, and I have figured out a way to work artistically, but yet also commercially, and have success pitching to libraries. Again, it's not that I didn't do this pitch to the brief and get forwarded, I did. And if I had done more of the briefs and, and worked harder on writing for those briefs, I probably would have had more forwards. I also would have spent more money on the $5 submission fees. But what I found, and this is just my experience, that while a forward feels nice, most of the time there is nothing that comes from it. None of my forwards have resulted in one phone call, one contact, or anything. Again, you could get back to saying, well, maybe they weren't interested in your music. And I'm sure that's the case. There are certainly other possibilities for what happened with that library after Taxi sent them the forwards. They could have filled the particular need. Someone else brought them a song that was just perfect, or they had an in-house team that wrote it. 
So there's lots of reasons why the company might have just decided they're going to wait for a while on this project. There's tons of reasons why the forwards would not generate a contact back to me. Regardless, whatever the reasons are, I feel like that I have wasted my time and my money pursuing libraries in this fashion when I could just pursue them myself and hear back myself or not hear back myself and then approach the next library and it would cost me nothing to do that except my time. Now, yeah, if I create something for a brief, I could possibly use that somewhere else. I could use it in another pitch. I could use it uh, in stock libraries. I could use it to put on Spotify and things like that. There's, there's other things I could do with it, and I have. But that's not the point. The point is I created something I didn't want to create for a brief in hopes that it would reach somebody, and I paid money to do that, and I got nothing back in return. Shoot, I can get nothing back in return without paying any money. Creating. Versus just creating exactly what I want with the knowledge of what libraries I am creating it for and what they need and approaching libraries for free and having a good chance of hearing back from them or getting songs accepted. Maybe I'm already with that library so I know there's a possibility that it might be accepted or they will get back to me. I have something that they want or have requested, but they allow me the freedom to do it the way I want to do it. Or it could just be a thing where I get in touch with a library, I show them some material, and they say, yes, we'd like to start a relationship with you as a writer. I just think it's a much better bet sending music directly to someone, to a contact, yourself, than paying for the pleasure of waiting for someone to let my song through a gate so that someone might possibly listen to it and might possibly get back to me and paying for that whole experience and waiting an unknown amount of time until all that happens. It's not like there's no chance with the taxi system for that to happen. I know tons of people it's happened to. But the chances are just so much smaller and more expensive than me just pitching the songs myself to libraries. There's also something I call taxi guilt where you're paying for this service, you're getting these briefs every day, and you know if you just sat down and did a little work and wrote to a brief, you might possibly get a forward. But then all of your daily work is happening. You're working for your job, you're working for clients, you're working on your own creative music, and that kind of takes all your time and you're not able to get to those taxi briefs. And then you start feeling like maybe I'm the problem, maybe, it's me. I'm just not spending enough time on these briefs and I've spent all this money for nothing and this guilt settles in that you have paid money for the service and you're not using it. That's probably one of the biggest reasons why I re-upped for my second year because I felt guilty that I had done this video on taxi not working for me and I hadn't done the work. And so I said, you know what? I need to do the work. And I came to my audience with my second taxi video and said, I have got to do better if I'm going to use this service and fairly say if it works or not for me. And at some point, the briefs start to pile up. They start to expire. You start to freak out on the last day of the brief and you spend your whole day working on a brief and getting it in there. And maybe you might get a forward, maybe you won't. But it kind of becomes a bit of a drag and a bit of a pressure point, which I just don't think I need, and I know what I'm talking about as far as just writing what I want to write and submitting it to libraries is not what the gurus on YouTube say to do, at least the gurus who talk about briefs. I'm not talking about taxi people. I'm talking about gurus who talk about making income from music, production music, or music for television or movies or whatever. They live in a world where the brief is the way. You write for the brief, and if you want to get paid, you write for the brief and get it in there. Write for the brief. It's the only way. I get why they say that, and guess what? They're not wrong. But I just got my first PRO check. It wasn't huge, but it wasn't small, and it was for some television placements last Christmas, and I've had more through the year that I have seen, and I've gotten all of those from personal relationships that I've made by sending my music directly to music libraries and getting in there. So guess what? The brief is not the only way. It's certainly a way for those people who are working for clients all day long. But 
If you are like me, if you are a person who really wants to create what you want to create, then you can study the industry, create what you think the libraries need, and pitch directly to them for free. I not only believe it, that's my experience, and I'll continue to document that experience on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and watch what happens as I continue to go through this whole thing. I think if I'm going to pay money out for my licensing career, I want to do it in ways that I think will help me either finish the songs with quality or maybe get them heard by people that could I could be in personal relationship with without having to go through a gatekeeper. And here's what I mean. Maybe I need to spend more of my money in Nashville with my players and my singers and different things and spend money on the songs rather than spending it on a pitching service. The way I got songs signed to my first libraries is by using high quality people to help me produce my music. That's been my producing style through the last 10, 20 years is to use great musicians and engineers and singers and things like that from Nashville and Los Angeles and different places to make great music that can get signed. I might even pay to pitch personally to a music supervisor face to face where I could not necessarily pitch the song because they needed that song right then, but that I could make that connection with them, get their email and then have a personal relationship with them and eventually have a email list full of people that I can email the newest songs to and they can say, hey, I have a use for this right now. Again, costing you nothing except maybe if you did pay to be part of a pitch meeting where 10 or 15 people pitch songs face-to-face, -face, even on Zoom, where you can get a, a relationship going, a face-to-face -face relationship going, and then trade emails and have someone to talk to. I think that's a smarter pay personally to me. So the final bottom line for me is that Taxi is just not meeting my needs and getting my music to music libraries and licensing possibilities. The success I have had has come from personally sending what I feel are the right songs to the right libraries and making those deals and those relationships myself. And that cost me nothing but my time. $600 including two years of membership and 40 songs at $5 per submission has just had no results for me in the past two years. And it's just not smart for me to continue. Again, this is me, this is my experience. You may have a different experience. All I can do is just tell you straight up the experience I have, that's what this whole channel is about. This channel is just all about my experiences doing the same things that you're trying to do. Like I said, I tried hard in my second year to write for the briefs. Like I said in my second taxi video, I said I would submit more. I said I would write for the briefs. I tried harder to use it as a tool to get forwards and find relationships with music licensing libraries and companies. I honestly think I did that. I read the briefs every day, sometimes twice a day. I saved them and depending on the time, I tried to make and pitch as much as possible. I'm also a full-time teacher now. I still have music clients I serve. I compose for other libraries and I run two YouTube channels. But still, I tried to use Taxi as a tool to help find new libraries. I had quite a few forwards, just no return calls, just no relationships from those forwards. And to be clear again, as I said at the beginning, this is not a rip on Taxi. I believe they do what they say they do. I think they are a good company that gives you a chance to get your songs, if their quality is good enough, forwarded on to a company and a library or someone who might get back in touch with you and do something with your song. They do give feedback with each submission. I've talked about that in my other videos and some people find that helpful. I just can't justify the cost when I am making it all happen myself without having to pay a dime other than my time. I hope this has helped in some way. And if you have success in Taxi, I'd love to hear about it below. If you have more success going directly to libraries, tell me about it below. And if you feel like you have had a, a Taxi experience you'd like to share without ripping Taxi as a company, don't wanna get into that. We just want constructive things in the comments. So please put those below. You can see my other Taxi videos in this playlist right here. And as always, thank you for watching.